Before making a decision, you should fully understand the risks and benefits associated with the procedure. Your orthopedic surgeon will explain the potential risks and complications of hip replacement surgery, including those related to the surgery itself and those that can occur over time after your surgery. Blood clots in the leg veins or pelvis are the most common complication of hip replacement surgery. Your orthopedic surgeon may prescribe one or more measures to prevent blood clots from forming in your leg veins. Serious complications such as joint infection occur in fewer than 2% of patients. The performance of hip replacements depends on age, weight, activity level, and other factors. There are potential risks and recovery takes time. People with conditions limiting rehabilitation should not have this surgery. Only an orthopedic surgeon can tell if hip replacement is right for you. I think it, it, it's not uncommon to be reluctant to have an operation. You know, no, ma no matter what. It may be something that you've never done. But it's worth it. And even during the operation, there was no pain. Yeah, there, what, what are you, what are you giving up? You know, you're gonna give up pain and a bad hip, a bad knee, a bad, and what are you gonna get? You're gonna get mobility and something that works magnificently. I don't know, I think it's a game you play. I don't think it's a game you walk away from. And when you play it, you'll be a winner. You will not be a loser when you play that game. Well, I think the primary fear that, that I had was, you know, what could go wrong. <clears throat> and um, because I obviously I'd never had a, a surgery that in, intrusive before. Uh, and then I think there, what became more important to me was my day-to-day -day life. And when, you know, I, I couldn't walk right, I couldn't do some of the exercises that I was accustomed to doing. And then it was just some of the simple things like hitting tennis balls with my daughter. Uh, I waited so long to make that decision and I was in such terrible discomfort that um, making this decision was a relief and I was looking forward to it. In fact, I had to put it, they couldn't schedule me in right away so I was a little bit upset. I wanted to get it done right away. Uh, but the actual day of the surgery, it's, surgery is a major uh, thing in your life. It's not something that you can take lightly. So it, it does you try to do everything you can to prepare for it. The decision to have surgery is difficult for many people. You'll likely have fears and concerns, but your doctor can help. The right time to have surgery is based on the severity of your osteoarthritis, level of pain and immobility, and other factors. It's natural to be fearful about surgery. Yet many patients wish they had done it sooner once they rediscover the activities they enjoyed before the surgery, with increased mobility and reduced or relief of pain. In preparation of hip replacement surgery, your physician or internist will conduct a thorough medical evaluation, including any necessary medical tests. You may also be asked to attend a pre-operative educational class about your upcoming hip replacement. The more educated you are prior to surgery, the easier your post-operative treatment will likely be. Your doctor may recommend exercises or suggest physical therapy before surgery so you can stretch and strengthen your muscles to speed your recovery. Many patients arrange to have a caregiver, family, friends, or temporary help after surgery to help with everyday activities such as bathing, grooming, moving around, managing the household, and running errands. You will most likely be admitted to the hospital a few hours prior to surgery. After your joint replacement and some period of time in the recovery room, you will be moved to a hospital room. Although each patient recovers differently, an average hospital stay is four days. During this time, pain medication will be available to help ease your discomfort.
Within 24 hours of your surgery, you will begin walking with the aid of an assistive device such as a walker or crutches. The physical therapist will also teach you the safest methods for getting in and out of bed or a chair, dressing, and using walking aids while you're regaining your strength. You will be taught the do's and don'ts of joint replacement recovery and should quickly start walking and doing exercises. Also during your hospital stay, you will work with a physical therapist to gradually increase your hip strength, mobility, and range of motion. Although you may experience some pain during physical therapy, your hard work now will aid in your recovery and help you get back to the life you love. You'll also learn isometric exercises which tighten muscles without moving the joint. You will be instructed to do these exercises a number of times per day. Your physical therapist will encourage you to move your ankle and other joints to remain strong. By the time you leave the hospital, you should be progressing well in regaining your mobility and stability. Before you are discharged, you'll also receive instruction for your at-home recovery, including exercise, precautions, and personal care. If your sutures or clips have to be removed, you will be advised about who will remove them and where this will be done. It is extremely important to follow your surgeon's and physical therapist's instructions when you return home. It's really the patient's responsibility to how well everything will turn out. But basically, you're, you're, you're given a win on a Goldman plan. All you have to do is perform. I knew that doing rehab the right way benefited you 100%. I mean, it, you follow the doctor's instructions, the, you know, the people who are helping you in rehab, and then you'll never have any problems. Like, I've had this hip for eight years and this one for five. I have not had one second of problem, and that they're mine. The second hip replacement, I actually did pre-rehab. For three to four weeks before the surgery, I did the exercises and that, that I would have to do after surgery, and it helped me. My recovery, uh, the, the first couple days of that probably was more difficult than I thought, just simply because uh, you, I had you know, having the, the trauma of the, of the actual surgery. Uh, but as I got home and, uh, and had started to really focus on getting back to day-to-day -day life, the recovery went much smoother than I ever could have anticipated. For me, the rehabilitation was not that difficult. It was, um, it was a pleasure to be moving and not have as much pain. I was able to do more things than I expected I could do immediately. The second hip replacement, I just sprinted to the starting block. Yeah, you know, no fear, you know, not worried about time. Like, let's get it done. You mean I gotta get this done? Let's go. You know, you know, when can I get it? Like, uh, and, you know, if I had any other, you know, obviously you don't want to get re replacement parts. But if you need them, you know, like, I have a knee that's not doing that great. As soon as I know that I, I would lose my mobility, I'd get that replaced, you know, because I would already, I'd already have confidence. And that's a big thing is to already have confidence in, in, the, in the procedure and in the product. Leaving the hospital with your new hip can be very exciting and a little unnerving. In the hospital, you had access to nurses and other healthcare professionals around the clock. Now you're returning to your independence. You'll still have the support of your healthcare team as you resume daily activities after hip replacement surgery, and you'll enjoy the comforts of home. However, this may be an uncertain time for you. You will continue the exercises you began in the hospital and gradually increase the number and duration of the exercises. Patients who have had hip replacement tend to agree that the exercise program is crucial. If you used a continuous passive motion machine in the hospital, your healthcare team may ask you to continue with it at home. This device is used to gently flex and extend the hip joint.
During recovery, you will progress from using your walker or crutches to a cane. If you have no problems, you'll graduate to walking on your own. Eventually, you will be allowed to climb stairs. In most cases, patients begin with smaller height steps and gradually progress to standard height steps. You will also be advised to gradually increase household activities, such as cooking, cleaning, and doing laundry. You will be allowed to take a shower without limitations when your incision heals. Between 6 and 12 weeks after surgery, new exercises may be added to your regimen, such as toe and heel raises, partial knee bends, hip abduction, leg balance, and riding a stationary bicycle. Your surgeon will tell you when you can return to activities like walking without a cane, walker, or crutches, driving a car, and returning to work. Of course, determining the date you return to work will depend on the type of work you do. An office worker places less stress on a hip than a construction worker. People who do manual labor or tasks requiring squatting or climbing steep stairs may have to discuss vocational counseling with their surgeon. Staying active during recovery will help control your weight and maintain muscle tone. There will be some limitations, but taking the time to recover is worth the inconvenience. You'll need to consult with your surgeon about returning to work, sports, and other recreational activities. It is not uncommon to still experience some pain because a full recovery typically takes three to six months. Hip replacement operations are generally successful in relieving pain and restoring movement. However, a repeat procedure and replacement of the prosthesis at some point is sometimes necessary because of wear and tear on the joint or the effects of particles produced by the implant parts moving against each other. Talk to your surgeon about his or her experience with the longevity of hip replacements. Mm -hmm.